Perhaps I am underestimating them, but I would vouch it to be true that few to be born after Generation X that haven't gone down the Roman rabbit hole, or perhaps I should call it Romanus Lepus Foraminus, have heard of I, Claudius, at least if they aren't British. It's unfortunate if I am correct, as they would be missing out on an important pillar of both historical dramas and television in general. One thing immediately apparent to anyone taking a cursory view of the series is how many accomplished or notable actors are in the cast. Brian Blessed as Augustus, Patrick Stewart as Sejanus, and the late John Hurt as Caligula are some of the most obvious. I would say that the title of best performance within it goes to either Derek Jacobi as the titular Claudius or Sean Phillips as Livia, but I am getting ahead of myself there. To explain to the unfamiliar, I, Claudius is a 1976 British historical drama centering around the rule and events of Rome's Julio-Claudian dynasty, as told by the Emperor Claudius, and spans from 24 BC until 54 AD, showcasing the political intrigue and conflicting decisions that caused the decline of the dynasty despite the strong rule of Augustus. Another thing many not accustomed to it may think might be on the lines of Ugh. The theory looks old and cheap, me like shiny shiny and big effects. I think one aspect that makes this thought of the minority when it comes to those overviewing the series is most rational people being able to realise limitations of the time, and I, Claudius, using it to the show's advantage. I see the series as less close to modern dramas in its design, and more akin to theatre, which allows central focus to be placed on the cast's acting capability. And playing to such a strength truly elevates the work with how many experienced actors of stage and screen come together here. Speaking of its cast, a strong aspect of the series that we can see echoed in famous dramas of the modern era is its multifaceted characters and exploring sides most historical depictions don't focus on. There's things such as Augustus presenting obliviousness to the issues in his family due to bias, despite otherwise being remembered as arguably the greatest emperor, or the attention given to Herod Agrippa, whose role in the Roman Empire is often overlooked, and those that know of him may only be familiar with the small count of him in the Acts of the Apostles. As I've already given praise to the portrayals of Livia and Claudius, you won't be surprised the character writing is a reason too, with Livia's machinations to secure her family status and become a goddess, takes on a greater meaning when learning the latter is out of fear of what could happen to her in the afterlife, if not venerated. Claudius's ability to play the fool and being forced into the position of Emperor, despite his aspirations for the return of the Republic, also shows his ability to do what is necessary for the good of the people despite it not being in the way he'd wish for, much as many characters in modern franchises and dramas are forced to compromise, which makes them more complex as a whole. On the subject of Claudius's aspirations, Knowledge of history helps increase the level of tragedy for the audience, with the inevitability of some aspects such as no none of the emperors within it will have happy ends, or Claudius' ideals for the Republic will never return. I, Claudius, establishes itself as a pillar of television history with the reach and impact of its legacy. For instance, David Chase has stated, as well as Steve Sharippa and Michael Imperioli, reiterating on their Talking Sopranos podcast, that Livia Soprano's name and personality are inspired by Livia within I, Claudius. George R. R. Martin has also mentioned in interviews that the portrayal of Tiberius by George Baker served as an inspiration for Stan Baratheon's circumstances within the A Son of Ice and Fire novels and Game of Thrones TV series, with it saying a lot that two pillars of dramatic television owe so much to the series. Well, at least one is still a pillar, whereas the other is more of a broken column people are doing their best to fix. I'd also suspect that Drusilla from Buffy the Vampire Slayer took some inspiration from Drusilla's portrayal here, specifically rather than her historical account when considering sources such as the film Caligula playing things more straight to the recognised historical accounts, rather than playing her upon the line of insanity and the forced appearance of madness to be in Caligula's good graces, somewhat reminiscent of Drusilla's madness having been forced upon her by Angelus within Buffy. We can also see similar with those two HBO series in explicit content. 
Many people seem to think of full nudity and discussion on topics of sexual nature on syndicated television being something that came mainly around the turn of the millennia before becoming more popular in the 2010s. But the BBC produced a work in the 1970s with just as much focus on it. This is very much a favourable aspect of I, Claudius, as, though explicit nudity on its own isn't something of merit, telling the story of the Julo-Claudian dynasty's instability without bringing to light fully what I'll dub the bedroom politics would have been a great affront to authenticity and praise must be given for not shying away from such. Going back to its influence on The Sopranos, I, Claudius does a praiseworthy execution of the subtlety within this dialogue. Perhaps the best display of this is in the penultimate episode, in which Claudius receives the last letter from Herod, in which he laments for offending the one true god. This is more layered than it appears, as even though those familiar with the biblical accounts of Herod Agrippa may believe he may be announcing faith in either the god described in the Torah or having found belief in Christ, his willingness to throw away his religion's rules at earlier points in the series and the title of the episode may cause the audience to question, is he referring to Claudius after the Britons deifying him? with this being a poetic way of apologising for breaking his friend's trust. This sort of subtlety and layers within it show just how great a writer Robert Graves, who wrote the novels this show was based on, truly is as well as how well the screenplay for this adaptation was written. The series isn't perfect though, with one major sin against its writing being a few terms that crop up being an affront to the authenticity. Things such as Augustus mentioned in France, despite the series having already mentioned Gaul several times, or Herod's affectionate nickname of Claudius being Little Marmoset, despite them being a New World Monkey. But it's thankfully no more than the occasional inaccurate term without major impact to the writing. That said, I, Claudius is an essential view for those who appreciate the history of television, wish to see excellent acting, or who are wishing to see a truly great Roman television show that wasn't damaged by cancellation. Hopefully, an audience for it will continue amongst younger generations to keep this pillar of television free from the dusts of irrelevancy as time moves forward.